Oh 
house of the Lord, as I greet everyone in the house of the Lord, we always get our desires, we always get closer to God, we get corrected, we get uh, brought to a sweet fellowship with God. We we'll open our Bibles to Daniel chapter 6, um, we start from verse 12b, the other part of, the, of verse 12 that says, the king answered and said, this thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians that cannot be altered. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we have read your holy inspired word that cannot be changed. The Bible says scriptures cannot be broken. Let the anointing that wrote the scriptures come, Lord Father, and speak and minister in the lives of your people, Lord Father, so that we can see changes, transformation, victories, answers, and testimonies. And Father, your name glorified in our lives. You commit the service into your hands. Speak to us in a special way in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, you may be seated. I said today I'll be talking about uh, when God reverses your irreversible situation. By that we can prove that there is no situation that is unalterable or irreversible. So we see in the days uh, of Daniel there that when he, he was promoted and he was one of the, the governors in the provinces of Persia, some people plotted against him that he was not going to no one was going to pray to God in any way, but Daniel was praying TTS three times a day. You know, when you're taking your tablets, TTS three times, try to not supply. So he was praying in the morning and afternoon and the, a, a night, knowing that even the law that was made against him to say he should not pray to God was unalterable. But he knew that God is able to change the unalterable law. He's able to reverse the evil decrees that are against his word. So he, God reversed it when he delivered him from the lion's den. We see in the days when uh, Christ raised Lazarus, that when he says Lazarus come forth, it was already late, but he's always on time, even when he's four days late. When the mother said, e even now, Lord, meaning even if it's late, God can still do something about the situation. So God uh, he says roll the stone they could do what they can do then God starts where their ability ends when you have done your part and ended somewhere God will take over from there then the Bible says um, Lazarus came forth our prophet says here to mention Lazarus otherwise everyone was going to rise here to be specific so look at the miracle that happened when it looked irreversible that four days dead meaning that when he rose 38 trillion dead cells came to life. When he rose, 135 billion neurons oh, that were dead started firing. When he rose, 35 trillion dehydrated or clotted red blood cells that were dead came to life and started having oxygen where there was no oxygen. It means that all lost information from the dead brain came back again. He could know his family. It means that uh, even the sickness that caused him to die, yet to perish when he rose again. It means all maggots and all bacteria that had been decomposing his body, yet to disappear. That was a reversal. It means even the theophany body he was, he was wearing yet to unclothe and come back to that body. All that at the voice of the calling in the power of the name of Jesus Christ. A lot of things happen in a short space time were under the voice of the powerful anointing of God. So it meant even those uncles who were sharing his jackets and his inheritance he had to bring back. Meaning that God reverses everything that you have lost. So imagine how great a miracle it was. But look at what happened in the Valley of Tripons when there was no sign of flesh no sign of skin, no sign of any hope, and even the bones had already been scattered, and it looked irreversible. And our God specializes in things not impossible. God reversed that irreversible dry bone situation. No matter how dry your situation is, it is reversible. It's not God who said it's not reversible. It's our terms and our science and our experience that says when things are like this, they cannot change anymore. But our God, he, he, it's never too late for him. You must never despair. It's never too late for, with God 
God cures the incurable. He serves the unsavable. He loves the unlovable. He reaches the unreachable. He restores the unrestorable. He reverses the irreversible. He gives hope to the hopeless. He changes the unchangeable situations. He touches the untouchables. He mends the unmendable. He opens the unopenable doors. He breaks the unbreakable yokes. He repairs the irreparable damages. He renews the the unrenewable opportunities. He visits the unvisitable and forsaken rejects. He transforms the untransformable hearts. He hears the inaudible cries. He notices the unnoticeable outcasts or downcasts or, or, or miscasts of life. He knows the unknowable secrets. He uses the unusables. He rewrites the stories of those who are written off. Um, when you are down to nothing, God is up to something. Meaning, God can restore lost souls. He can restore lost time. He can restore lost opportunities. He can restore lost glory. He can restore lost relations. He can restore lost funds. He can restore lost health. He can restore lost hope. He can restore lost blessings. He can restore lost joy. He can restore lost abilities. He can restore lost uh, memories. Mori, he can restore lost possessions and everything that the enemy stole, God can reverse and restore. That day on Calvary, when man was lost and did no hope without God or his love, Christ took away all condemnation and erected a sea of forgetfulness wherein the power can be there for you to be justified, if, to be able to undo what was done because there was no way to undo what you did as if you have not done it in the first place but by justification by the work of grace called justification it means what you did which is irreversible because you did but you have not done it in the first place that is how God reverses the irreversible what was written against you even in God's records God did to make sure he deletes it even from his memory, God cannot remember that you were once a sinner when he's under his sin of forgetfulness. It means that he's undoing what the world has done in you. God is reversing all what sin caused, this cruelty. Whatever passed through your mind has not passed through your mind. Whatever was bad nature is no longer part of you. You know, God reverses the irreversible. There was a time when the road of Aaron was so dry and it was hopeless and, but overnight in the Shekinah glory, it was reversed to his young days again, to green, to fruitful, to almonds. That's why the fig tree Yet no excuse because it was still on the ground, connected. But the road of Aaron had been dry for years. If your life has been dry for years, the anointing can be restored again. The good days can be restored again. There is nothing impossible with God. One time he healed a man who was born blind. Even if you were born with high temper, born with uh, cycles following you, demonic forces, God can reverse all situations that are against you. You must believe that God can do the impossible in your life. He, he, one time when Jonah was in the world's belly and in the deep sea, you, it was negative after negative. He was in deep problems. But he made a prayer that reversed things. He prophesied and said, yet again, I will look to the temple. Meaning, it's never too late, even if I'm here, as long as I have breath, I will speak my victory out. I will speak my breakthrough out. And then, the well had to reverse its direction. Your situation will reverse its direction. It's never too late with God. One time, the prophet, um, it was Isaiah, came to the deathbed of, uh, of Hezekiah and say, thus say the Lord and we all know, thus say the Lord cannot be reversed cannot be broken but Hezekiah says, Lord I've spoken, uh, I've lived uh, uh, holy before you you must have a somewhere where you can start from you with God so he turned his head to the wall and he prayed and while Isaiah was still in the court he reversed and God says God tell him I've added 15 more years. And God did something that was impossible. He says to let him choose whether he wants the son to go 
10 degrees ahead or 10 degrees backwards. What is God saying there? He can go into your future and arrange it. He can also go to your past and sort things there. So Isaiah, they chose that, Ezekiel chose that it's normal for things to go ahead, but let's do the irreversible. The sun yet never moved away in the opposite direction. But under the prayer of Hezekiah, things move the direction he wanted. You can say the direction that you want in your marriage, the direction that you want in your finances, the direction that you want in your health. So there are prayers written which are now scriptures. There were people's prayers, people of like passion like you and me. But their prayers have become the word of God because they were praying the word of God. The prayer of Hezekiah changed the son's direction. The prayer of Hannah changed her barrenness and it reversed barrenness. The prayer of Jabez changed his background when he was born in sorrow and was hopeless. The prayer of the Ninevites after a few sermons or one sermon they repented and even their cattle and sheep were in, uh, in sackcloth and when God had said yet 40 days Nineveh shall be destroyed. That prophecy never happened. Yet God sent his servant to say 40 days. As long as God is saying it's not now, it can be changed. Because if you have 40 days, you can pray for those 40 days. If you have a few hours, you can pray for those hours. So the Ninevites changed that prophecy until Jonah was angry. So the prayer of Jonah also changed the direction. Of, so we see that the devil can do some things that are uh, above normal, but uh, uh, above natural, but not supernatural. Uh, the magicians could call frogs, but they could not reverse the frogs. That's why all these sangomas can call curses, but they cannot reverse, they cannot repair, they can damage, but they cannot repair. Because the repair is an act of the power of God. So they could do, uh, maybe water becomes blood, but they could not reverse. So every damage in your life, don't go to people. People cannot reverse. It takes the unseen hand of God to reverse. And God can bypass procedures and protocol to bring your answer in the short split second because God bypasses processes because he's not bound by processes. All those laws of gravity and the universe are his laws that he can manipulate at any time. One time he had to even cause the exit to float against the law of gravity. He reversed the effects of gravity. When the prophet just brought that stick there and the gravity was reversed. Whatever caused unwanted results in your life can be reversed. One time, uh, even uh, Abraham and Sarah, their age was reversed. They became young again for the promise because God wanted their body to match what is coming to them. If you want the promise or the answer to come in your life, make sure you are ready to match what God is bringing. Let your home atmosphere match what heaven is sending. Let your life and prayer life, your dreams and your being, your state of your heart, prepare to be renewed and transformed to match what you are expecting from God. So, one time, uh, many times actually in discernment, you hear the prophet saying, uh, sister so and so, I, I see you getting younger, younger. What is he doing? He's going backward in time, reversing going to when that person is young and say when you were a young girl, you were chased by a dog and, uh, and then you became nervous from that time. God can comb your life back and forth. He can go backward and remove what started that problem then? You can go ahead and stop what will block your answer ahead. So God is able to restore lost opportunities and wasted years. He says, I'll restore the years that the palmerworm, locusts, and, uh, and, and kankerworm, and, and caterpillar is eaten. You know, if God could restore 
a man like Nebuchadnezzar, after he has learned his lessons, you know, losses are for lessons. Failures and scars are for lessons. When those lessons are learned, God can bring back what was taken away to allow your learning. So, I don't think you are in the state that Nebuchadnezzar was when he was in this state. When he was actually eating grass, when he was an animal, you may be down to nothing, but not at this level. But the Bible says in Daniel chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar started coming back to his throne. Even when he was dispossessed from his throne seven years, no one could take his throne. When you are taken, when you are removed from your position, no one can take your position. God will make sure that one day you shall come back to your ought to be condition because no one can substitute you. God would rather have a substitutional sacrifice so that you can requalify to come back to your ought to be condition. So God can rewind. All the things that you had lost, God can bring them back. He can rewind your life. We see in Revelation chapter 11 um, about Moses and Elijah, the two olive trees that when they were killed and in the pool of blood, while the world was rejoicing and sending presents to one another, rejoicing that these people are dead, in the rubble or in the chaos or in their pool of blood, God reversed and they rose again. They shall be bouncing back to what you are supposed to be in the economy of God, in the purpose of God, in the kingdom of God. I was listening to a testimony from Sister Lois, who is the sister also actually to Oscar, because she is the one in this picture. When Barbara went to Cloverdale, that's where this sister Lois said this picture with Barbara Bram, when he prophesied about the healing of their mother who was on deathbed. That deathbed became a testimony bed than a deathbed. Your situation is not for your destruction, but it's for the glory of God. It's for you to be closer to him than before that situation. So, here she was, you can see she was even wearing a trouser, but uh, afterwards, when she saw the prophecies one by one that were declared by the prophet, that the mother who rise, who she was healed overnight, she rose from her deathbed. And then Oscar's horses were recovered. And now we see Sister Lois' testimony. Here it is now. She's giving it her own testimony of what happened. Now she's a sister. You know how God knows how to change even the one who was not going to repent by powerful, undeniable, infallible proofs and testimonies that will move even an infidel. She gives more details that um, Oscar's horses were found and not only that, she says there was a time after that when Barbara left their home, she's giving that, you can find this testimony on YouTube, she's saying that while Barbara crossed the creek going away after the testimonies, after the supernatural, he crossed a certain river. Then when Oscar's horse he had a broken leg, Amen. you know, one supernatural opens way to another. They said, Oscar just disposed this horse. He says, no. He went to the creek where Abraham crossed and took the water there and baptized the horse and it stood healed and complete. Now this woman is saying, I was there when it happened. Because while he was, Abraham was talking to Oscar, he says, Oscar, do you have a sister called Lois? And Lois was looking and saying, what is happening? But Lois says that uh, my brother had a bad habit of writing on the wall. So I thought maybe, because Papa Mon was speaking, was looking at the wall. Where the wall. There was nothing on the wall, but he was telling her that your sister wants to go to town for a date, but that's not her husband, that one is not the right one. And he was coming through their life like that. But that when you invite God in your home, you have invited testimonies. You have invited supernatural that is irreversible. It shall be like that for the entire life. It will never stop. When God starts in your life, when it begins a good work, you will finish it. You won't leave it halfway. We see in the book of Esther also that the law of the meets and patient. 
that was signed by the signet of the king and they said on the 13th day of the 12th month which is Adar, they were going to kill the Jews and it was already written that cause to destroy and to kill and to perish all the Jews and the signet was made which was irreversible but God had played around with the Purim stones Purim stones are dice uh, I think all of you know what dice are we were there uh, they, they threw those let's say they threw the one of them and it was six the other one was also six so it meant 12 months was the result God moved this to the, the dice so that it's not one and three then four months God wanted to create a space for his strategizing hand to arrange things when you hear that that matter is postponed God is creating a space for his hand to rearrange things for you so that same day is now actually the Purim stones now it's the Esther's Purim that day is now celebrated as the day of victory when it was supposed to be the day of their death because someone's prayer changed things she says if I perish let me perish and God changed things and God is able to rewrite your story and God can rewrite your story it's never too late with God let's quickly go to the story of Gehazi when Gehazi when Naaman was healed Naaman uh, leprosy left him and he offered some riches you know God had done many things with uh, Naaman the Syrian uh, he was a, God had wrought many victories and then when he was healed of leprosy uh, Elisha says let's not take anything from him money or anything but Gehazi there was tempted he says okay but um, the, there are a few people maybe in the ministry that needs that money there's a sister in church that really needs those funds. I think God will understand. There is another brother that I saw. He didn't have good, uh, good school fees. So I, maybe God will understand. But he followed and then he was cursed. He, uh, and Elijah said, um, he punished him with leprosy and said, you and all your descendants shall be leprous. You see the cost of disobedience, the scars of disobedience. So here is a case. This man he has been good throughout in ministry. He has been working right. Oh, there is a moment that can spoil all things for you. So he was right all the days, but that unguarded moment. And now, even Elijah says in verse uh, 25 of chapter, uh, 2 Kings chapter 5, that um, is it time to take clothes? Or olives, what he's saying, look, those riches will come later. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, but it's not yet time to run out after those things before your character and your godly nature and until you are built to the stage of a perfect man. So, but could this be the end of Gehazi? After all the good amens in church, after all the carrying the spoken word, after running with the gospel to lay the rod on someone to resurrect, to try. To, after he has seen the chariots of Israel, but remember when God can reverse any curse Amen. it doesn't matter whether that curse came from an angel or from whatsoever God when you meet his requirements he can reverse any curse that's why we see now chapter 8 of 2 Kings the king is talking with Gehazi what is Gehazi doing because remember, lepers are supposed to be outside. It's a contagious disease. It's more than COVID, maybe. It was like COVID or something. They were supposed to be outside the camp, the lepers. Because you can't expose the king to such a contagious disease. But here he is now in the palace. And the king is saying to Gehazi, the servant of the man of God. So he's back to his position as a servant of the man of God he's back to working with Elisha what has happened he says tell me what has happened you see chapter 8 is after the 7 years of famine when there was a, such a bad now look at this um, there was a bad famine but look at this picture the king wants to know more about Elisha but in chapter 7 the king didn't want to hear about Elisha he wanted to kill Elisha so you see what has happened here when Elisha saw that they were boiling their children he says tomorrow at this time things will change in Israel 
When he made that prophecy, obviously when such a prophecy happens and economic turnarounds happens, every king wants to know about that prophet who has caused the country and the nation and the, uh, and the exchange rate to change overnight. So that's why the king is wanting to know more because things have changed. But what happened when he mentioned, remember, uh, some, some scholars say the four lepers that were outside the camp were Gehaz and his sons because he was cursed and he was a leper. He was white and leprous. So, but he always wanted to hear what Elisha is saying. That's why I always say that even when you are chased from church, I don't want you to be chased. Why should you be chased from church? But always pass by me and say, oh, uh, what are they saying today? I want to hear something, you know. Don't just say, I am going. You chase. No. When you are being disciplined, be around the windows there in the car park and hear something. In YouTube, you are not chased. And you, you, you cannot be disciplined from Facebook. Just go there and hear. So Elisha, even when well, um, Gehazi, even when he was outside there, outside as a leper, he kept saying, what are they saying? When it was said that tomorrow at this time, he says, so now, if we sit here, we die. So let's move. We know their chariots. We saw that the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. So when he started moving, the chariots joined. And the Syrians had the chariots moving with Gehazi. He had been associating with chariots before. So they left their things. And when he was now taking money and things, he remembered that Elisha said, that was not yet time. Remember, Naaman was a Syrian, right? And now Syrian things were going to come. So when we, they were now taking the riches, he says, mm, we don't do well. Let's tell our brothers. That's why we see him now in the king's palace. He seems to be healed now. He seems to be back to Elijah, uh, Elisha being a servant of the man of God. So God is able to reverse any case in your life. Because God is everything that you need him to be. He is the great I am. He is your healer. He is your deliverer. He is your restorer. He is everything to me. Even Ahab, when he repented, the curse was postponed. Now, let's look at this. If the prayer of Hezekiah changed the mind of God, the prophet says that many times I see it getting dark around a person and I know that they are going to die. I never tell them unless I'm led to tell them. Because even though God could pronounce death on that person, yet their prayer could change that. I want you to see. So, if your prayer could change what was pronounced by God, what more what people pronounced? What more what the devil said in the fifth dimension? What more those who say, you shall not be married, you shall not prosper, you shall never be healed. My, all those things are nothing. Your prayer can change things. So, if Jonah, if the Levites could change the, the prophets of Jonah, if the, that said the Lord about grace weeper in the message, make the valley full of ditches, was changed by a right mental attitude and their testimony. It means things are, can be reversed because it says, it happened that the angel of the Lord heard that. So that night, things were reversed from above. When something is pronounced from heaven, only heaven can reverse it. But when something is pronounced from the underworld, the pulpit and all angelic team and the ambassadors and children of God have authority and power and jurisdiction and dominion to reverse every case and to break every yoke and to break every chain. So, one time in the message experiences, the Lord spoke and told the prophet when, uh, to tell Brother Kenny and them that um, don't go up there. His time is up. That man was going to die. But they kept praying and praying. You see how many that say the Lord have, have been deferred or changed when they are irreversible just because someone prayed in desperation and move mountains and change the unchangeable and reverse what is irreversible. So later at 3, it was 3 a.m. in the morning, um, God visited Abraham after these people, they, they got the message when he told them that he's going to die. But they kept praying, saying it's never too late with God. God can do anything, anytime, any place. When your problem gets so heavy and you think there's no way through, he's the lion that prevailed, he's the mighty conqueror. 
Then he says, does his wife um, wear brown suit uh, with a waist on it and his gray hair? He says, yeah. So he said descending and then said, thus said the Lord, he is healed. You see how God can change things. Watch how God is using your situation to turn your life around. The person you were when you enter that circumstance is not the person you shall be when you come out. But you shall not be contained by your situation. One day, you shall say goodbye and that day can be this day. When we see that Israel, after being away from their whole homeland for 2,000 years, one third of the men's existence on earth, 2,000 years, they were out dispossessed and the land yet inhabitants that were doing their things and God says time has come few as you are torn as you are wounded as you are your land is your land no matter how torn you are no matter how far you have been away yours is yours healing is yours salvation is yours the only question is yours it doesn't matter what you have done what you have been dispossessed from but when you come back to God whatever was taken away from you was kept safe somewhere and you shall be reconnected with it. That's why God says, a desert shall blossom. A desert cannot be dry forever. Your life cannot be dry forever. Your life cannot be empty forever. Things cannot be tough forever. You cannot lose your joy forever. You cannot lose your health forever. But at the scent of water, as soon as there comes drops of quotations and scriptures, the desert blossoms again and roses will bloom again. Your life shall come back again. Your restoration is coming back. Your testimony shall never die. God reversed the angry waves of the Red Sea. Remember, it was not a red river. It was a sea. God rolled it back. He rolled back the waters of the mighty Red Sea until the whole of the Old Testament that is one testimony that is repeated more than any other testimony. When you come to uh, many books afterwards, they kept saying the God who opened the Red Sea there is a landmark testimony that becomes a referral point in your life. Even in the life of the prophet, God kept saying I'm the one who created the squirrels. I'm the one. There must be something that attaches you closer to God that when there is a need and a new challenge, that testimony reappears. The testimony of the Red Sea kept reappearing everywhere to prove a hallmark of the power and the act of God. So cases can be reversed. We see in Genesis chapter 49 when, when, when Jacob was dying he cursed Levi and Simeon because of their anger, what they did to those people there um, because of Dinah. And then he, he says, I will divide Jacob, them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Then the person who cursed them died. Brother, even if the one who cursed you died, the one who blesses you is alive. The one who restores is alive. Even those who put you in a problem if they are dead, but the one who takes you out is alive. Our God is not dead. But you notice how God turned the curse of Levi. He says that curse be eventually became the blessing of the Levi's descendants. Because we then read in Numbers chapter 3 from verse 45 that the Levites, take the Levites, all the firstborns, you know they are now the firstborns um, Levi, Levi is now like the firstborn. He's now associated with Melchizedek, paying tithes. You know, but there was a curse before. And where there was a curse, let there be a blessing. Where there was confusion, let there be peace. Where there was sickness, let there be health. Where there was emptiness, let there be abundance. God is able to reverse a curse. When you are now in Christ, things cannot continue as they were when we were empty. When you are now full of the Holy Ghost, trends cannot continue the same as they were when you were full of demons. Things cannot continue the same when God takes the steering of your life. There must be a change of things. When, when I went to Jericho, um, I went to this place. I was riding a camel there. The, behind in the video, you will see w w where it's the, the waters that are flowing there. It's the 
is, is written Elisha Spring Fountain. Those are the waters that the Elisha healed. Remember, Joshua cursed Jericho and they had bitter waters from that time. And nothing was good in Jericho. But when Elisha came, because these men now and the sons of the prophets were now in that area, they had reversed the behavior that caused the curse. And then he said to them, the waters are now healed. So the curse was reversed. So all handwritings of ordinances that were against you can be reversed today. All incantations and divinations that were against you can be reversed. All losses, all cycles that were against you, all weapons that were against you can be reversed. All trends, all habits that were against you can be reversed. All failures, all scars, all pains can be reversed. All the declarations and spells, all the witchcraft and divinations and incantations against you can be reversed. All spiritual acts and wickedness that were against you can be reversed. One time I was here and I was praying for one of my relatives who had gotten, he got only use in Olive. It was no starting point. While we were praying for him, a demon manifested and said, this man is okay. We just held his mind. I said, fine, release now. He wrote the next time and passed his all levels. Meaning that whatever was held, whether it's funds that were held, they can be released. The doctors some time back told Athena, my, my niece, that she's going to be paralyzed one side because of meningitis that hit her when she was six months old. And they said that side won't work. She's using, she passed the exams writing with the side that they said will never work. What was said to never work will work. Your marriage will work. Your prayer life will work. Your business will work. Your testimony will work. Everything around you will work. We don't have things that don't work because the word will make things work in our life. And actually all things work together for good to those that love the Lord. We have so many cases here, maybe three or four, of those who had diabetes. And they, uh, even at the doctor's, uh, uh, it was couple's book launch, Doc Chim was giving another testimony of the other sister who says, this one I'm going to beat. And diabetes disappeared. We heard the testimonies of the Masegos with HIV disappeared, tested over and over. With God, nothing is irreversible. Your situation is not there to stay. But what abides forever is the word of God. You can silence the devil in your life. You can blot out all satanic ordinances that are against your finances, that are against your dreams, against your prayer life. And God can then turn your breaking point into a blessing point. Every burden becomes a blessing when you come to God. When we come to God, Things that were following us cannot come with us to the kingdom. The modus operandi of the kingdom does not allow those things. If you would go in space to Mars, there are some earthly things that cannot operate in that area. So when you, a man is in Christ, things must be new. Sister, when you are in Christ, don't allow those fears to follow you. Don't allow those natures and those habits to follow you. We, last time when I was talking about revivals, I gave you the update on, on the Fiji revival. That a man of God, when they, when they were persecuting missionaries, some missionaries cursed the place and said, nothing good shall happen here. Maybe when we were young, people cursed you, don't worry, we are reversing that. It didn't take them 20 services to curse you. And they did not take you to a school of curses for the curse to hold. You don't need to go to a school of deliverance for the deliverance to hold. You just by the word of God. So those in the Fiji revival, uh, when that missionary, one of them was partly converted, maybe he was converted, but he still had some temper. Maybe it was God, we don't know. But I don't do such things. He cares the people and say, you are killing me? Me? Ah, you are going to suffer. So they suffered. And he says that the fish some species of fish in that area disappeared for a long time. Other missionaries came to bless. It was not working until they had to find the grandchildren of that and say, sorry, let's pray and commit this to God. And when they closed that chapter, those fish 
reappeared in the sea. Uh, what I'm just saying is that nothing can disappear forever in your life. The happiness that disappeared must come back if you reappear in the presence of God. What disappeared in discipline in your life will reappear again. We hear in the Bible about Legion, we had a league with demons that no man could tame him. No man could reverse his situation. There are many times when you have a situation and you have gone to this one who has a reputation of helping people, but that person fails because no man has such reputation than Jesus Christ. He allows helpers to fail so that the help of the helpless sometimes you go to a man who prayed for many cancer cases and they disappeared and he prays for you nothing happens. God is only telling you that no one can take his reputation. He can use people, but he wants you to have established a relationship between you and him so that you don't lean in the arm of flesh, but lean on the everlasting arms. Nothing is irreversible in your life. Your losses, your depression is reversible in this service. Your pain is irreversible in this. Your situation is reversible in this service. Even those who sinned against God, uh, that was Dan and Ephraim, they did bad things in the days of Jer even Jeroboam, there was abomination that happened there. Do you know even Jeroboam, when he raised his hand and it became leprous, he cried to God say, reverse this, I'm wrong and I'm not changing, but reverse this, I'm not happy. Uh, I'm still a Chorop, I'm a sinner afterwards, but reverse this. Even Naaman says, I'm going back to the gods of Ekron and things, but please take away lepros. What more you who is saying, Lord, I will change. Take away my pain. Lord, I'm not going back to those things. Take away. You will take away not only your problem, but that desire to be in those nature. Because when a man is Perched, a worshiper is perched. They remain no more conscious for sin. The things that you are trying to quit will quit you. You'll find that uh, there is no more thirsting for the things of the world. They have taken wings. So uh, Dan and Ephraim, they were removed. You know, no matter who we are, no matter what God has used us for, we can be removed if we are not careful. That position is by relation with Christ. Even if you are the original olive tree, you can be removed olive branch and someone can be grafted. But not forever. You cannot be removed forever. Israel was removed and the wild olive was put but Israel shall not be removed forever. One day they will come back to their position. One day you will come back to your inheritance. One day you will come back to everything that you have desired for so long. So then and Ephraim, you find that uh, in, the, in the account of, in Numbers chapter 2, they are in their place. Then we find in the other accounts, in Revelation chapter 7, Pane Zita Rissimo. It was written and it was removed, right? But not removed forever. Because we see in the seventh seal that they will be back in their tribal order. That is one of the duties of Moses and Elijah to bring back restoration and restore all things. So when the message of restoration comes under Moses and Elijah, even those that God was angry with were brought back. We see their names coming back now in new heaven and new earth because they were blotted out from under the sun. But in new heaven, there is no more sun. So they were blotted out from under the sun. Because nothing is new under the sun, but in the new heaven, there is no sun. It's no longer under the sun. It's now under the S-O-N. Nothing is irreversible. God can reverse and bring back happy days again. Bring back your joy and your victory again. We see that um, when he multiplied the fish, when I went to Takba there, I went to see the place and I bought some fish. It's not the ones that he multiplied, but the loaves and the fish were quite nice. So, uh, when he was breaking the bread, it was growing back. And it was with the spices, God was multiplying the cooking oil, the spices, the curry, 
and he sold in the ratio it was before he broke it off. In the ratio that things were, unless if you want more, a good measure pressed, pressed together and shaken together, God can give you your heart's desire. It's like the burning bush. It was looking like it's burning. God knows how to attract you. God knows what will attract you. In the, he knows a quotation that will attract your attention. He knows a scripture that will attract your attention. So, Moses always passed that bush, but this day, the bush was different. Something was on the bush. This day, the sister was different. Something was on the sister. It's like when the donkey, that past day, it was with Christ. It was no longer a donkey. There was something on that donkey. Actually, it was not a burning bush. It was a non-burning bush because it was not burning. <laughs> it was not burning, but the fire was now one with the bush. It was not consuming the bush. When Christ is now one with you, your life reflects Christ. You can, it's not burdensome to carry the instructions of the Spirit and the promptings of the Holy Spirit. So you see that God will reverse even the appetites of lions in the millennium. They will start saying, grass is delicious. And they will never miss, miss, miss they will never miss steak. It will be a mistake. They will, be, they, they will never miss steak. <laughs> they will eat grass. <laughs> the lion shall lay down by the lamb. They will never re remember the old wars because God restores everything that was brought by sin. He brings back everything that Adam lost. It comes back in your life. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Every burden can be changed. The Bible says, every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The crooked way straight, rough way smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. You see, this woman who came to church with the hood of death, people come with atmospheres in church. We need good cameras. People come with the atmospheres, but it cannot, that atmosphere cannot coexist with the atmosphere of blessings and the power of God. Somewhere as the service was going on, the hood of death, the spirit of death, the spirit of heaviness shall flee away as you put on the garment of praise. It was when they were killing St. Martin that they put him under the tree that when they cut the tree, nothing shall reverse gravity. He is going to be crushed by that tree. But the rushing mighty wind was calculating. It waited for them to go one, two. The wind was not in a hurry. It knew that, okay, all laws they are using to destroy my servants are mine. All laws, all, all material. The tree is mine. The servant is mine. And the gravity is mine. The wind is mine. God knows how to use natures and forces and powers around you to make all things work together for good to those that love him. At the right timing, when they hit and they say, Shoo, the wind came and say, Shoo. <laughs> loud to see when it started. As I'm closing, I'm closing in about five minutes now. We, we want to be done our time is already up. So in Laodicea when he started, it was the most wicked edge that there was no eulogy, not one good thing. No, God is an honest God. He doesn't pretend when things are bad. He just says, you, 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 you say you are rich, you, you are good, but you are wretched, miserable, blind, and naked. But he started canceling them. He says, for your blindness, use this for your nakedness use this for your misery use this for your, for your blindness I have the eyes of for every little problem in your life there is use this scripture for that other problem use this quotation for that other problem use this inspiration for that other problem use that sermon God has everything arranged that can take you out of that situation but what he did not write in the days of John, he visited Brother Bram and says, pick up your pen and write. He, Brother Bram is the one who wrote the eulogy 
that was supposed to be written by John, but it was not timely. If God calls me today to rebuke you, to repent and make right, the blessing I was supposed to give you will be given next service after you've made right. But you, if you now this year repented in the days of John, when it, it, it could not because it was not the days. But do you know even Paul tells the Colossians and the, 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 the Ephesians also that give the letter to the Laodiceans and let them give you my letter. But that letter to the Laodiceans was lost because Laodiceans were to be addressed by the messenger of Laodicea, not the messenger of Ephesus. So God knows how to bring the best timing of your testimony. He counsels them. And to us a son is born, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Things shall be beautiful. I declare, whether there is a gift holder or not, things shall be beautiful. Whether there is an angelic visitation or not, by the word of God, things shall bloom in your life. I want to close, I want to close. Uh, Joseph, two years in prison, seeming like he's forsaken. There is time when it looks like you're forsaken, but I believe one, one, once or twice God would throw something to Joseph to say, troubles you have some, but not from above. Faith was not forgotten from the Father above. So, one day he came out of his situation. God will take you out of his situation. I like when the story of Abraham was written, when his obituary was written, that he staggered not. According to our eyes, we saw him staggering. Let me tell you, all your mistakes will never appear in the heavenly account because of the blood of Jesus Christ. There is a fountain filled with blood. And the sinners plunge beneath the flood and lose all, not some, but all their guilty state. So don't live with guilt when there is a fountain. We hear about the story of Rosella also. Now, perfect in the arms of God, in the, in the, in the ministry of God because of the transforming power. This message is not just information, but transformation. Things that you think are, are irreversible. There is that fisherman there, he made a mistake and took even the intestines of the fish that still has to use them tomorrow. <laughs> the intestines were lost today, but it wanted to eat worms tomorrow. And the third pool, he had to pull back what was pulled out. <laughs> Whatever was taken out of you, if you still need that thing tomorrow, God knows the way through the wilderness. He knows all that I need for tomorrow. Strength for today is mine all the way and all that I need for tomorrow. What I need for tomorrow, I will never lose it today. I know who holds tomorrow. I know who holds my future. The one time it was said, let's turn to our feet so that I can close. My time is up and I don't want to, to hold you in a midweek service like this. Uh, there was a time when they said the doctor's machine when it reaches here, it can never reverse. And that couple just hugged them. They hugged and said, praise the Lord. We're not looking at the doctor's machine. We are looking on the promises of God and it was reversed. The Colorado storm was reversed. Your storms can be reversed. When the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion were like them that dream. When it happens, what was declared in that service, when it happens, you would think you are dreaming. The Bible says it's now six months with her who was called barren. Whatever they called you, one day you say it's now three months with an account that was called frozen, which was called empty. Um, the Bible says in this scripture, which shall be my last scripture, uh, it says, shall the prey be taken from the mighty or lawful captives be delivered. So there are some people who are suffering for what they know. They are lawful captives. They are in that situation lawfully. Yes. And even the devil knows that God understands that this one I must make sick. Even God agrees that yes, devil. It's lawful. 
you are, you are, you are not having any breakthrough because even heaven says, yeah, sure. Even the devil says, yeah, according to spiritual laws, this sister must suffer. But God says, even lawful captives shall be delivered. Even if you are in that situation for your own mistakes, God sounds a jubilee trumpet. A trumpet of reversing. Reversing everything that was against you. Let's sound that trumpet to say whatever was against you, let it be reversed in the name of Jesus Christ. One of our sisters who is here, had a relative who was, who disappeared, I think they were in South Africa or somewhere for 20 years. They didn't even know whether they are alive or not. She brought a prayer request and we worked on it and said, he's going to come. He actually came and we talked and we greeted one another, he's around. So God can reverse any situation. He can reverse any condition. By this service, I minister restoration. I was hearing a testimony from another sister who says, the other service, while we were preaching on Wednesday, you mentioned testimony of ulcers, of someone who was healed of ulcers. Without you praying for me, I woke up perfect. I don't take medications even up to now. The angel of the Lord who used to visit the neighborhood. He knows the Abugo streets. He knows the Tongo Kara streets. God is, doesn't know English streets only. He knows the, the Mbuyaswes and the, and the Machobanas. He knows exactly where you stay. He knows exactly what you need. Today as we all pray and commit our needs to him, let us all pray. Our Heavenly Father, we have declared by your word that Nothing shall be impossible. You are God who specializes in things not impossible. You are God who can rewind, who can go back to where we missed it and correct all wrongs there. You can go back and rearrange, Father, where we made a mistake. I pray that that fountain filled with blood will cleanse every vilest offender today. Whosoever is thirsty for restoration, may they see your unseen hand moving and rearranging things. If you did it for Gehazi, if you did it for all those men of old who came to you, Lord Father, on the basis of faith. When a man comes again on the basis of faith, you are not too busy to hear that one. But I pray that you dissolve all tumors here today and dissolve all burdens and all heartaches. Renew your people, Lord Father, back to you and back to your purposes again. Back to your word. I pray that your anointing and your rushing mighty wind will come, Father, and fight their battles. Disarm all principalities. Father, we are above all thrones and principalities of this world. This world can never hold us. May the Holy Spirit take preeminence in every situation and take charge and jurisdiction in our lives to rewind and repair and rejuvenate and revive and restore and transform all those who are hungry and thirsting for a miracle. You are still God who is still in the healing business. You are still the great El Shaddai. You are still the great Jehovah Jireh. You are still the Jehovah Nisi. You still specialize in what men cannot do, in what specialists cannot do. You still can revive, Father, those who are downhearted. You still, Father, can visit those who cannot be visited by men. You still are a father to the fatherless. You are still God who can tend the temples. You are still God who can tend the tithes. You are still God who can answer them in their dreams like we did to Solomon. You are still God who can enter their offices and rearrange things. You are still God who is still the great physician, the great emancipator, the great El El Elohim. You are God of the now. You are God who moves elements. You are God who is a strategist. You are God who is a master architect. You can rearrange things. You can answer Answer your people, I pray that multiple testimonies will come, even without laying on of hands, Father, by the blessings that come upon this message, Father. You said, wherever this message is preached, the angel of the Lord, the pillar of fire, shall accompany this message. Father, may you answer your people, may you bless them, may you encourage them with something, dropping a handful on purpose for them to know that you are still God, you are still on the throne, you still rule in the and govern. In the affairs of your children. We bless you, Father, and we honor your name in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We have come to the end of the service. Remember, on Friday, we are here. Invite many people. Brother uh, Abraham Myra Moses is coming to preach for us. He's actually landing tomorrow. Um, we are so privileged to have that servant of God, mightily used of God. Uh, in many testimonies 
that if there were no proofs that you could look at, uh, you would think that these things are too much. So we are so privileged to have such servants of God in the miraculous, in the supernatural, and in the pure teaching of the word of God. You see, the pureness of the word without gymnastics answers every need and everything that you desire. So we won't miss any opportunities. A well sought after man that is difficult to get, very difficult to get. Um, I was trying to have him ministering for us in March in South Africa, but he will only be available after he leaves us. He will only be available in September. So the South Africa meetings will be in September. So when we have such a privilege, we're not going to miss service because of beans and things that you are cooking that is not even nice to eat. So you, you just come and uh, draw from God and get what belongs to you and invite friends. This year, we want everyone to be a soul winner. You would rather uh, fail to convince them, but they've arrived. <laughs> but don't fail to bring them in. So we want to start our service early because uh, Friday, those who are Friday, people will be doing their things there. They'll be making noise, but we are more noise makers with our things than them. Um, we're going to be rejoicing here. So, that is Friday. Let's aim that by half six, the preacher is standing here. By half six. Then, uh, our brothers from Pumula, Louvre, and so forth, let them come in numbers and um, if they have challenges, we'll see with the trustees what is possible, but let them not plan challenges after this statement. And then on Saturday, I had said in the morning, we'll have the youths, in the afternoon, we'll have the couples. But we are changing to say on Saturday, afternoon only, you will speak to couples. Then Sunday afternoon, the youths will remain, then you will, you will speak to the youths. So Sunday will have the morning service. When we dismiss, you will remain speaking to the youths. So it's, it's, a, it's a very tight program all over Zim. So on Monday, you'll be leaving, going somewhere. But because of the demands nationally, we are extending his ticket again to cover the other brothers. Um, so let's support him. The love offering and things, let's give him. Let's make sure we bring something to make it good. Um, Maybe you have not been generous to anyone, but try one this year, uh, and then it will work. We always cover that for you, but this time try and also cover. So we'll sing as we dismiss. God bless you. Sowing in the morning, sowing seed.